All right, guys, another day, another chapter. This chapter is called Choose Kind. There was a lot of shuffling around when the bell rang and everybody got up to leave. I checked my schedule and it said my next class was English, room 321. I didn't stop to see if anyone else from my homeroom was going my way. I just zoomed out of the class and down the hall and sat down as far from the front as possible. The teacher, a really tall man with a yellow beard, was writing on the chalkboard. Kids came in laughing and talking in little groups, but I didn't look up. Basically, the same thing that happened in homeroom happened again. No one sat next to me except for Jack, who was joking around with some kids who weren't in our homeroom. I could tell Jack was the kind of kid other kids liked. He had a lot of friends, and he made people laugh. When the second bell rang, everyone got quiet, and the teacher turned around and faced us. He said his name was Mr. Brown, and then he started talking about what he would be doing this semester. At a certain point, somewhere between a wrinkle in time and a shen of the sea, he noticed me but kept right on talking. I was mostly doodling in my notebook while he talked, but every once in a while I would sneak a look at the other students. Charlotte was in this class. So were Julian and Henry. Miles wasn't, though. Mr. Brown had written on the chalkboard in big block letters, P-R-E-C-E-P-T. Okay, everybody, write this down at the very top of the very first page in your English notebook. As we did what he told us to do, he said, okay, so who can tell me what a precept is? Does anyone know? No one raised their hands. Mr. Brown smiled, nodded, and turned around to write on the chalkboard again. Precept equals rules about really important things. Like a motto, someone called out. Like a motto, said Mr. Brown, nodding as he continued writing on the board. Like a famous quote, like a line from a fortune cookie. Any saying or ground rule that can motivate you. Basically, a precept is anything that helps guide us when making decisions about really important things. He wrote all that on the chalkboard and then turned around and faced us. So what are some really important things, he asked us. A few kids raised their hands and as he pointed at them, they gave their answers, which he wrote on the chalkboard in really, really sloppy handwriting. Rules, schoolwork, homework. What else, he said, as, if, as he wrote, not even turning around. Just call things out. He wrote everything everyone called out. Family, parents, pets. One girl called out the environment. The environment, he wrote on the chalkboard and added our world. Sharks, because they eat dead things in the ocean, said one of the boys, a kid named Reed, and Mr. Brown wrote down sharks. Bees, seatbelts, recycling, friends. Okay, said Mr. Brown, writing all those things down. He turned around when he finished writing to face us again, but no one's named the most important thing of all. We all looked at him out of ideas. God, said one kid, and I could tell that even though Mr. Brown wrote God down, that wasn't the answer he was, he was looking for. Without saying anything else, he wrote down who we are. Who we are, he said, underlining each word as he said it. Who we are, us, right? What kind of people are we? What kind of person are you? Isn't that the most important thing of all? Isn't that the kind of question we should be asking ourselves all the time? What kind of person am I? Did anyone happen to notice the plaque next to the door of the school? Anyone read what it says? Anyone? He looked around, but no one knew the answer. It says, know thyself, he said, smiling and nodding. And learning who you are is what we are here to do. I thought we were here to learn English, Jack cracked, which made everyone laugh. Oh yeah, that too, said Mr. Brown, which I thought was very cool of him. He turned around and wrote in big black, big black block letters that spread all the way across the chalkboard, Mr. Brown's September precept. When given the choice between being right and being kind, choose kind. Okay. So everybody, he said, facing us again, I want you to start a brand new section in your notebooks and call it Mr. Brown's precepts. He kept talking as we did when he was telling what he, we kept talking as he, as we did what he was telling us to do. Put today's date at the top of the first page. And from now on, at the beginning of every month, I'm going to write a new Mr. Brown precept on the chalkboard and you're going to write it down in your notebook. Then we're going to discuss that precept and what it means. And at the end of the month, you're going to write an essay about it and what it means to you. So by the end of the year, you'll have all your own list of precepts to take away with you. 
Over the summer, I ask all my students to come up with their very own personal precept, write it on a postcard, and mail it to me from wherever you go on summer vacation. People really do that, said one girl whose name I didn't know. Oh, yeah, he answered. People really do that. I've had students send me new precepts years after they've graduated from school. Actually, it's pretty amazing. He paused and stroked his beard. But anyway, next summer seems like a long way off, I know. He joked, which made us laugh. So everybody relax a bit while I take attendance, and then we're, when we're finished with that, I'll start telling you about all the fun stuff we're going to be doing this year in English. He pointed to Jack when he said this, which was also funny, so we all laughed at that. As I wrote down Mr. Brown's September precept, I suddenly realized that I was going to like school, no matter what. Alrighty, and that is actually one of my favorite things that this book says, is when given the choice between being right or being kind, choose kind. Okay? So I want you guys to take that away from today. Make sure that if at all possible in every situation... You are kind above everything else because the kindness will go a really long way.